Bay Bridge City Church. Happy Easter. Happy I'm Easter. Pastor Nick. This is Pastor Gary. Amen. What are you doing here today? Well, we're here to celebrate the resurrection of the king. You know, they, we know that from the story that the, the ladies went to that tomb first and they found the stone rolled away. The tomb is empty. The tomb is absolutely empty. You, yeah. were, you told me you were going to be doing something different here today. You were representing a, a different oh, generation. Well, you know, I'm, I'm here representing Bridge City family. Everyone who was born before 1980, okay? <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like the people that remember Motown and loved it. And the people that remember maybe Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. <laughs> and remember Kent State for a different reason or the oil embargo. Or how about they remember when this was dressing down for church? But you know what else we remember that you don't? All right, let me hear. The last time the Pirates won a championship. Yeah. 1980. Yeah. I don't think any of us are going to get to see that anytime well, I expect this I do expect a shout out now from from our generation yeah well I remember the temptations I love them very much that's because I was born in 1984 so and, those oldies are great and you're tempted every day yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but what are we celebrating today pastor Gary and we're celebrating the reality the truth that Jesus Christ is alive right again we, we we're serving we're serving a king who predicted his own death right yeah Predicted who was going to do it, when it would happen. Yeah. Predicted he'd rise from the dead. And he was seen by over 500 people on the other side of the grave. That's, that's why I believe. Yeah. The, the three words, he is risen. Amen. Three of the Amen. most powerful words in the world. I got to give my, my pappy a shout out. My first Easter as a Christian, <laughs> uh, almost 15 years ago, 14 years ago, uh, I walked into church and he said, he is risen. And I had no idea how to respond, and I just said, yep. <laughs> so let's practice. He is risen. Yep. <laughs> now let's practice the real way. You ready? He is risen. Yes, indeed. He is risen. <laughs> Pappy, he doesn't know either. He is risen indeed is that response. But, hey, Good Friday, you, you, you preached an amazing message on Good Friday. I, I loved hearing you, you teach. Your heart just comes through so naturally, and that's your heart. We always kid about the pastoral hearts that, that, that you and I get yes, to, to yes, share sure. that gifting. But uh, if you had to recap Friday, you, you don't get to talk about yourself. I'll talk about you, sure. uh, which you're used to. Um, what, <laughs> if you had to recap Good Friday, what was your big thing that you, you took from Good Friday? <laughs> That again, that, that we would recall, when we recall the cost that Jesus paid, you know, again, that the love of God was so proven, uh, the greatest love story ever told is Jesus Christ laying down his life for us in our sin. And again, when you count the cost, you're compelled. And when we remember what he did, we're compelled to follow the king. It's a joyful thing mm -hmm. to give everything, to yeah. give it all. And I think my biggest thing from Good Friday is simply that people got to hear that. Like, some for the first time. They, they've That's known true. that yeah. Jesus Christ died on the cross. They've known about Good Friday because they probably get off work. I mean, everybody's pretty much off now. But, <laughs> but the fact that they got to hear the reason that it is called Good Friday. And the fact that you know Jesus Christ died on the cross for them. That, that's my, that my biggest thing, getting to see people experience that. And we also had an amazing uh, time. We received an offering. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, we received over $1,200 out of that offering. That's going to be used for? Uh, first responders, those that are in the medical field, and those families and people directly affected by COVID-19. So thank you so much to uh, Bridge City Church and even those outside that may have gave on Friday yeah. night. Uh, your, your gift is going to make a difference in individuals' lives, and we appreciate it greatly. And uh, to celebrate the fact that, that over $1,200 came in for that. And, and yes. we're believing for more, but it's so amazing. So thank you all mm -hmm. so, so much. And we appreciate yeah. it greatly. Uh, but, you know, we, we talk about the offering that we received on, on Good Friday. And obviously, you know, later on in our experience today, there's going to be a, a time where Pastor Sean and Pastor Dan receive an offering. But Pastor yeah. Gary, I, I love to hear your perspective on things and your heart because mm -hmm. you're, you're so full of wisdom and, and knowledge. Why do you laugh when I say that? <laughs> it still shocks you. Wow. But, yeah. but why do we give? Why, why do we give? I know it's a, it could be a stressful time for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. why do we give? Why do we still honor God yes. with our finances? Yeah. Sharing, obviously, there's a scriptural perspective. We see, of course, there's, there's, it's a little, we're told to, right? So we, do it, we can say we do it out of obedience, but we sure miss the spirit of it then. You know, I, 
I know I've tried to order my life since I've come to make Jesus the leader of it, that I want to be one who, who, is, who gives really joyfully. Just as we were talking about the Good Friday message, you know, Jesus gave, gave it all. Amen. He, gave, he, gave, he gave everything. And I joyfully give all that I have. I, so I'm, I'm, a, I want to be joy, I'm a joyful giver. I want to be a generous giver. Mm-hmm. After what he's done for me, like, like Paul said, all, all this is, is worthless compared, compared to the infinite value. So we should give. I believe if we're really understanding and appreciating the yeah. cost, the love of God, I want to be generous. No, you don't have to convince me. I, forget tithing. I want to be a generous person. Yeah. Right? I, I want to show my king that he's the one that matters. Yeah. And so giving becomes really an act of love, an act of generosity, an act of joy. Yeah. Yeah, but a truly generous. I, mean, yeah. I just want to be a generous giver. Yeah. I and want to be known for that. You, you hit the nail on the head with you know, saying that he gave everything. And that's why we're celebrating today. He gave yeah. everything, yeah. but then we celebrate the resurrection. You know, he gave everything, and we, he gave his life, and he shed his blood, and his mm-hmm. body was beaten and torn, and, but it was resurrected. You know, and when we give, we're, we're giving out of a, a, a cheerful heart, Appreciation. But, but we can't see how that gift is going to be That's brought true. to life and how it's going to be resurrected, mm-hmm. you know, when the church gathers, gathers together and the amazing things that God can do with those finances. So, yeah, yeah, it is true. Yeah. You know, I think about uh, a scripture we also mentioned on, on Friday. Matthew 13, where Jesus did, he spoke about the guy who sold everything. Yeah. He sold every, yeah, he's, he cashed out everything yeah. for the treasure of knowing Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that whole, that whole idea, yeah. And, and again, what does happen? Certainly there's practical things, yeah. right? The practical things that we see happen, like, like, again, like being able to help first responders. Yeah. You know, because people are generous, Amen. because we see that, it, that, that it's worth it. So we received the offering on Friday uh, for, for COVID-19 and those affected and first responders and medical workers. Yeah. And this week we're going to get to see that, that used in some ways on Thursday night and Saturday at all of our That's campuses. Right. We will have a, a food collection and a time of prayer. So we're, we're having at each of our campuses, you'll hear more about this later, but an opportunity for people to get involved. One of the things that has been the main source of text messages is how can I help? What can I do? Where can I serve? All those things. And, and this Thursday and Saturday at each one of our campuses, you'll have an opportunity to bring a non-perishable item, drop it off. And if you have a prayer request, just let the teams know that are going to be uh, socially distancing and making sure that they're doing everything safely and gloves and masks and, and making sure that that happens. But if you have a prayer request, let us know during those times yes. on Thursday and Saturday. And, and we want to pray with you as well. But what else is coming up this week? Wednesday, we have a, Wednesday night, a, a midweek. We have, we have a, a midweek. Yeah. Yes, midweek. And what we're going to be offering at, at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays through, through, the, through the website is what we're just calling a midweek, which is a time of teaching. You know, we, we recognize that as believers, one of our biggest problems, and we all know this, it's, it's lack of knowledge in the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, the, the Word is our, is, our, is our shield. The Word is our sword. And we recognize that people are hungry, and there's a desire to grow. Mm-hmm. And, and so what we're going to be doing is offering a 30-minute 30 30 minute time together, and there's a teaching in there. And actually, Pastor Nick will be on That's me. Wednesday. So That's me. Pastor Nick, yeah, give us give us a taste. Let's, uh, oh man, give us a teaser here. Well, well, listen, I, I said it in the beginning uh, of the teaching that you're going to see on Wednesday night. Uh, oftentimes, I'm typecasted. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, no, we, typecasted. What? <laughs> typecasted, like oh. We're going to talk about love. Let Pastor Nick do it. Uh, okay. We're going to talk about community. Let I thought Pastor you meant. I thought Nick you meant like it. whenever we have to prepare food for well, a large gathering. You just took my whole opening for Wednesday night. <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> okay. You ruined it without okay. even knowing. You don't have to tune in until seven ten now on Wednesday. Okay. No, but I'm speaking on community and okay. what that looks like, and uh, I won't spoil. But the characteristics of community don't require us to be together. The the main characteristics of community don't require us to be together. So uh, I'm excited about that. And I know we have some other Wednesday things sure. coming up in the following weeks. Well, hey, what text are you going to be from? Just so people could... Acts 2. Acts 2. Acts okay. 2. Okay, so yeah. people can be can be looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Prepare yourself. See Reading what you and preparing. Out. Yeah. Look at you. You're such a teacher. <laughs> do you want people to prepare? I want people to prepare. I yeah. do. Yeah. I want them to prepare I, as well. 
Got it. Prepare we're raising hearts. the bar. But raise first, we get to hear Pastor Rick today. Yes. And he's going to be delivering the, the Easter message. We're excited about that. Our lead pastor, Pastor Rick Paladin. Uh, he'll be live, and our hosts for the rest of the, the time today will be live. And I'm so excited about what's coming up next, which is worship. Yes. And our, our worship team and our creative team did a phenomenal job putting together today's uh, worship set, and uh, we're excited about it. And you'll get to hear all the fun stories about how this set got put together afterwards, but <laughs> it is very special, and we're very excited about that. So, Pastor Gary, I'm going to get all the... the the answers that I know you're going to say out of the way. Okay, I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite part about Easter? One of your favorite parts about Easter. And I'm going to remove all the, the stuff we know we're celebrating. Okay, <laughs> we okay. know the tomb's empty. We know that we all have right. life because Jesus rose from the dead. We know those things. But if you had to pick something outside, like what, what's one of the things or traditions that you love about Easter? Yes, for us, that a tradition, like for many people, has been family. We just love family getting together. Now, of course, today... We're taking on a whole new, whole new idea yeah. as we do virtual family, yeah. really together. Yeah. But but being together to, to as family to appreciate one another always. But again, it, it's so good. We listen. We are blessed that that all of our children are, are serving God, them and their spouses, and to come together and, and know yeah. and know why, why do we have what we have. Being reminded of that, it's just family. Man. Yeah. 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 How about you? Thank you for asking. I, I was hoping you'd ask. Yeah. <laughs> but, I caught that. You know, one of my favorite things about, about Easter is everything just seems to slow down. And you get to focus on why we do this. You know, you get to focus on, I'm going to do what I told you not to do. But the fact that the tomb is empty and that we yes. have family and we have life and we have joy and we have peace and we have comfort and we have all of those things because of today and you know everything is rolled into that you know the meal that you share the laughs Amen. that you share the, the 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 time outside the, the family photos like all of those things are because the tomb is empty and it it it's just like the culmination of everything. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that I'm so thankful for during this whole time is that we do get to slow down. We do get to, to recognize what's important. Yeah. We do get to take a minute and reflect yeah. almost yeah. daily now on the things yes. that are really important. You know, yeah. uh, I, I heard a, a great story about uh, a, an individual that grew up during this time and then they had to give a report in high school. And we're years and years down the road. And they came home and said, Mom, Dad, do you, do you, we're learning about the, the pandemic of 2020 in school. Do you remember it? And the, uh, the parents said, yeah, it was a rough time. It was a horrible time. We, we were off work. You were off school. We, 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 the grocery store, they were out of toilet paper, like all these things. <laughs> and they Stop. said, son, don't you remember it? And he said, yeah, I remember that. We, we ate dinner every night at the table. Oh, and yeah. we, we played in the yard. And we were together all day, every day. So it's all about perspective. And there was no school. Yeah, and, and there was, was no school. school. Yeah. And there was no school. You know, one, one new tradition, I appreciate that. You're yeah. absolutely right. One new tradition, I know, I would think just starting next year, Donna, my wife, lovely wife, we're going to have a new tradition. I think we're going to have a new meal, new traditional meal. Here we go. I can't wait to hear it. Broiled fish. Broiled fish. Why? Ask me why. Why? Why? Because we see that in, in, the, in the gospel, it says that when Jesus appeared to the disciples, all right, at that evening, he asked for something to eat, and guess what he had? Broiled fish. There we go. Broiled fish. That's, that's, it's going to be a new tradition in our house. What time? Next year. <laughs> you, want, you want to bite it? <laughs> yeah, I you, you and Rachel, come on over. Is Len Lennon can't come? Bring Lennon. <laughs> Bring Lennon. <laughs> well, listen, uh, we're, we're going to transition now into a time of worship, and we urge you to, to join in with worship. <clears throat> Stand to your feet just as you would on a Sunday morning. Raise your hands in worship and surrender and continue to, to worship and unite with us in worship. Pastor Gary, could you pray us let's, into worship? Let's pray. Let's join together. Father in heaven, we, we come before you and, and uh, more specifically than any other day of the year. But we lift you up and say thank you. Thank you. 
thank you, Father, that you proved you are who you said you are. Yes, Lord. That, that those angels appeared to the ladies outside the tomb and said, why do you look for the living among the dead? Yes, Lord. And Father, we just fill us. Fill us with the hope that the day brings. Fill us with a, a fresh hope, Father, as, as we go through these days in our country. Father, fill us, God, with an expectation yes, of good because Jesus is who he says he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, let's worship, church. We love you. We love you.
fill me Man's empty praise Treasures the fade Never enough You came along And put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied here in your love, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you, yeah. Time friend, yeah, cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's no place your mercy and grace won't find me again. There's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing.
awesome. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. The worship team was just so good. Just killing it, right? Yeah. And, uh, man, I just love being able to worship God on Easter because yeah. he is risen, right? Isn't that awesome? So now we're going to move into our uh, time of tithes and offerings. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much yeah. to all of our leaders and all of our members that have already given online. You guys are making a huge, huge difference. I don't know about you, but I love being part of a, a life-giving church Absolutely. like Bridge City Church. Isn't that awesome? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, on Good Friday, we were able to raise over $1,200 uh, to on, go to first, first responders, yeah, man. Uh, you know, medical staff, and those who are affected by uh, the COVID-19. That's amazing. amazing. Thank you guys yeah, so thank very, Thank you very so, much. so much. Thank you for being such a life-giving church. Uh, I, I just want to share a verse with you uh, real quickly and then uh, turn it over here to Pastor Dan. But I was reading in Ephesians 2 in uh, verse 4, it says, But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. What a powerful, powerful moment there. And what I'm learning from that scripture is when God comes into our lives, we become generous. Because God was a giver from the very beginning. Not only are we going to give of our time, our talent, but we're also going to give of our money. Yeah. Just giving away what, what was freely already given to us. And so we're asking everybody today just to just take a moment and just in your hearts just to... To, to give to what God is doing here at Bridge City Church. And there's yeah. some, been some amazing things that have been happening, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we still are on mission. We still are pushing the kingdom of God yeah. forward. Um, and, you know, that takes all of us. You know, yeah, we're so much better together. I know here at the, the North Braddock campus, over the last two weeks, we've been able to give 421 wow. bags of groceries uh, to people in need. Brighton Heights, they gave to 36 families. Murraysville, 26 families. White Oaks, 16 families. Wow. I mean, Come on. I mean, this is what the church does, yeah. you know, in, in tough times, uh, the church rises up, you know, yeah, and, and, and we're on. still on mission. And so thank you so much to everybody who's been generous and giving of their time, talent, and treasure. Uh, we do like to make giving uh, at Bridge City Church uh, simple. Um, so if you would like to give today, you can head over to bridgecitypgh.com. There's a link on there on ways you can give. You can give online. Uh, you can still mail your check in or you can text to give. Um, but, you know, we do like to make it simple because we believe um, that we are still on mission. Yeah, and, man. And, and, and it takes all of us uh, yeah. to make that happen. So, yeah, let's let's take a minute here and let's pray yeah. for, for this uh, for the tithes and offerings. So, Father God, we just uh, we thank you so much for a generous church at Bridge City Church. God, we thank you for the life giving people that are there. Father, we pray that as they're giving today, God, that Lord God, you would bless this offering, bless these tithes. Father God, we thank you that Father God, you're going to you're going to make room for more, Lord God, that we have more families that we're going to give to Father God, more areas, Father God, that we're going to uh, be able to in impact because of the faithful giving of our church in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So right now we're gonna uh, we're gonna transition into uh, uh, hearing a, a message from our lead pastor, yeah. Pastor Rick, on on uh, Easter Sunday, man. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah. here we go, Pastor Rick. All right. Hey, Bridge City Church. Happy Easter to you. What a great, great day it is. So excited that you're here. I don't know about you. Loved, loved, loved that worship set. Um, let's just give a shout out right now to the worship team in your chat, in your comments. Give a shout out to the worship team if you appreciated that. Show them some love. Also, our video audio production team, they are doing an awesome, awesome job at keeping us connected. Come on, go ahead. Give them a shout out in the chat, in those comments. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Normally, we are one church in five locations. But today, we are one church in many, many, in hundreds of locations all over Pittsburgh and uh, farther than that. So what I also want you to do is in the chat, in your comments, write down where you are. No, don't write down your living room or family room. That's not the point. Write down what city, what municipality, what borough you're in. Come on, maybe you're in the West End, McKeesport, uh, East McKeesport, uh, Braddock, North Braddock, Forest Hills, Delmont, Plum, Penn Township. Come on, you could be in any one of these places. Come on, let's just uh, write down there where you are and let's give everybody a shout out today. So, so glad that you are here with us. Before I get rolling today, I just want to stop and just uh, pray for you. First, I'm going to pray for three things. 
I want to pray that the peace of God would touch your heart because I know today that there are many people out there that uh, are struggling with just having peace in a time like this. I know that some of you have lost your jobs or are out of work or took a pay cut. And I know provision, provision of God could be uh, stretching you and testing you right now. How about just protection physically? I want to pray for those three things for you right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person watching to our online experience. Thank you for every person listening. I pray, God, for the peace of God to touch their hearts today. I thank you, God, for provision from heaven. Lord God, and I thank you for protection physically over their lives. Lord God, may every person that can hear my voice right now experience the peace of God, protection and provision right now. May you ease their heart right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Listen, what a great, great uh, opportunity we have here on Easter Sunday. And there's two big days for our faith. One is Christmas, uh, God with us. Easter, God for us. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get the picture of being at Heinz Field, being on the field, playing. Uh, rain, cold, muddy. That's kind of how we are here on earth. We're just trying to grind it out, trying to, trying to just make it through life, trying to uh, get more uh, money than month at times, and, and, and that's how we are. And we look up at the press box, and there's God up in heaven, all warm, all fine, all cool, and, and he looks fine. Well, Christmas, Jesus left the press box, and Jesus came down, and he was on, he was on the sidelines. That's, that's Christmas. But on Easter, Easter is Jesus coming onto the field, and he's with us. He's not just with us, but he's for us. It, it's almost like Tampa Bay feels right now that Tom Brady's going to show up there. Oh, they're, they're, they're yelling, they're cheering. Oh, there's a big excitement going on right there. It's almost as um, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, when he hobbles off the field, and then when Ben Roethlisberger um, comes back onto the field, come on, the, the whole place erupts. There's an, there's an excitement. I don't know if you've seen a picture of Ben Roethlisberger lately. He looks like somebody that's um, auditioning to be Moses in the Ten Commandments. Okay, that's a different story, different story. Here's Jesus, Jesus comes, he comes onto the field and there's an uproar. But you know why sometimes we experience Easter and it's not what we expected is because of this. It's because we don't allow Jesus to call the play. Oh, we like, we like the roar, we like Easter. Oh, we know the story, Jesus, up from the grave he arose. But we never let Jesus get into our huddle, and we never let him call the play in our lives. And we wonder what the big deal is. Today's a big deal because you're about to let Jesus start calling the plays in your life. You see, Easter, Easter isn't just the, the, the finish line. Easter's all about the starting point for our lives. It's the starting point where we find the good news. I don't know about you, but I could sure use some good news. Now, so, so when we're here today, we're not just saying, wow, we've made it. Jesus made it. He rose from, from the dead, and, and that's great. But no, Jesus is about to lead us into our future. That brings me great confidence. In the gospel of Mark, and gospel means good news. News, good news. Um, here it is. It's found over 76 times in the Bible. Mark 1, 1. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. So the gospel and good news, those, are, those words are used interchangeably there. So the gospel is all about Jesus. It's about the, the salvation that's fulfilled by his life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. That, my friends, is good news. That is truly, truly good news of what Jesus Christ has done for us. That was, that's, that's the story of Jesus' life. Now, the apostle Paul, he wrote in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he states, for I am not ashamed of this good news. Wow, there it is. I'm praying that as a result of our time today, what God does inside your heart is he takes you, from, takes you from just believing in God to being unashamed of this good news. That's what I want you to be, unashamed. 
And Christians too often are ashamed and, and we're hiding. When, when the apostle Paul gave us an example, come on, he goes, I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. That's right. The apostle Paul is writing to the, 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 the Romans, which were in Rome. And Rome was a powerhouse politically and, and military. They, they were strong. They were the place. Uh, it, we can kind of look at ourselves sometimes in the United States like that. We have it all going on, but the Apostle Paul says, I'm not trusting in political power or military power. I'm trusting in the power of God, the good news. That's what we can trust right now. And I'm imploring you right now in, in your living room where you're listening right now or wherever you may be, we're going to take our trust and put it on God. So what does this salvation really mean? It really means that God rescues us. He delivers us from destruction and puts us into safety. That's what I want you to experience. The safety of your soul. Even in the midst of rough times, we can still have safety and peace. Why? Because of my salvation, what Jesus has done for me, I am not going to be ashamed. The problem is, is sometimes we settle for spiritual activity when God created us for a meaningful spiritual life. There's times that we settle for religion when we were created for relationship. Jesus didn't do all this. The whole picture of Jesus, he didn't do all this to get you into a religion. He did it to create a relationship with God the Father. But too often we settle for religion rather than relationship. Well, let's look at some of the differences between religion and relationship. Here it is. Religion says you're not good enough. Relationship, the good news, it says Jesus is enough. Religion says earn it. Relationship says Jesus already paid for it. Religion is exhausting. Relationship is life-giving. Religion keeps us at a distance from God. A relationship, the good news, brings us close to God. Religion keeps you wondering. Relationship, the good news, gives you confidence. Religion says, look at me and look what I'm doing. Relationship says, look to Jesus. Religion, hmm, I messed up. Dad's gonna kill me. The good news, a relationship, says I messed up, I need to call my dad. That's the difference between religion and relationship. That's the big idea here. That is the good news. Um, I like good news. I like hearing good news. So right now in that chat, in your comment, I want you to, to, to write down in, in there, what was the best news you have ever received? A couple of the, my answers would be, if I was writing, would be when my wife Natalie said, yes, she would marry me. Three healthy children. The adoption day for two of our children. The day that our one daughter was cancer free. Those were good news days. How about a student loan getting paid off? Come on, these are just some examples. So go ahead, write it in there. What's, what's the best news you've ever received in your life? Put it on the chat. Put it in the comments there. Share what those good news are. But I'm telling you what, no matter how good all these things are, none of them are as good as what Jesus Christ has done for me. So I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I want to read to you some verses from the Apostle Paul. And he communicating, okay, about what happened and why, what's the big deal, what's the good news about Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 Verse 1, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Here the apostle Paul is saying, here, once you were dead, Listen, this is the deal with Jesus here. Um, Jesus didn't come to take us from being a bad person just to a good person or good to better or better to best. He came because we were dead to God and he wants to make us alive. Big difference there. 
And I think that's why Easter's come and go sometimes in our life. And we never rejoice. We never see what God's doing. We never experience the fullness of what Easter really is about. So what is this word disobedience? It means that we've crossed the line and we've challenged God's boundaries. The idea about the word sin is that we've missed the mark. That's right. What these, this disobedience and sin really communicates that we are both a rebel and a failure without God. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, should, I should have told you this. Before you get the good news, there's bad news. I don't, I don't know what you like to hear first, but let me go back and first tell you the bad news. There's, there's no way you can have a relationship with, with God on your own. Can't be good enough for it. Can't earn it. Can't do enough to get it. The only way we get a relationship with God is because of what Jesus has done for us. Come on, that's, that's the big deal here. It's because of him. So Jesus had to, he had to die a, a rebel's death in order to, to get people just like you and me, messed up, screwed up, and jacked up people, that, that he, he did it for you and he did it for me. He died that horrific, gruesome, horrible death. But listen, the good news is, is he rose again. So the bad news is, is we can't earn it. We've all fallen short of it. Verse three. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. That's right. I was a subject of God's anger. You're a subject of God's anger, unless Jesus Christ has paid for what you have done personally. But it's the resurrection. It's coming back. That, that's the big deal. It's the, it's the resurrection life that we celebrate. That's what gives me hope for my life. Now let's go to verse four. In verse four here, it says, but God. Oh, I just love the buts in the Bible. Come on, but God. But what God has done. And I thank God for the but God in my life. I, I'm just so thankful for what he has done. Because he's so rich in mercy and loved us so much, verse 5, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. That's what he gave you and that's what he gave me, a life to live now. That's what, listen, when it really comes down to it, how are we doing right now? I'm doing better than I deserve. That's why I want you to look at somebody in the room with you right now. And I want you to look at them and say, I'm doing better than I deserve. Oh, wait, Pastor, are you serious? I don't know if you realize what's going on in our world right now, but I'm not really doing better, better right now. Oh, we're doing better than we deserve because we deserve hell in Jesus because of his life, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension into heaven to prepare a place for us. I'm doing better than I deserve, and you are too. May that be the response this week. Everybody you encounter, whether it's on a video chat or whether you, you encounter somebody there, say, when they say, how are you doing? Say, better than I deserve. Because that's what Jesus Christ does for us. He changes our whole perspective in, in, into that. That's a game changer for all of us here. The problem is, is that many times we allow, their, we allow our mind and we allow this world to put question marks where God put a period, or I like exclamation points. So we, we allow that to happen. Let me give you a few examples. Jesus is alive. And many people are saying, uh, Jesus is alive? It's a question rather than a statement. How about you can trust God? And they change it to, can you really trust God? See, they, there's, they, they, our minds want to put question marks where there should be exclamation points. You're a new creation. And we think, uh, you're a new creation? Come on. God loves you. God loves you? Like, like, and we allow those things to happen in our mind rather than just say, no, 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 no. It's because God, rich in mercy, loved us. And he loved us so much that Jesus came back from the grave. That's a symbol of your life and my life right there. Now, this is the deal. So often in church life, see, religion, religion says we have to pay for it on our own. Religion says we have to earn it. Um, I, before all this began, I was going to the uh, health club, and I would get on the treadmill. 
And I would get on the treadmill and I, and I would walk. Sometimes I'd talk to somebody that was there with me. And I could monitor in my walk how many calories I was, I was burning, how, how fast I was going, how long I was going. So I could monitor all those things. And it, I came to a realization. A caramel frap from Starbucks, the small one, has over 350 calories. Come on, 17 grams of fat, 44 grams of sugar. And I got a revelation one day, if I wanted to have one of those, I had to get onto the treadmill and I had to put it on an incline for over three miles to, to, to burn off those calories. A Dairy Queen, how about a, a chocolate chip cookie dough blizzard, small, 710 calories. I, I'm just encouraging you right now. But what happens in our religious mind, we say, oh, I've done bad things, so now I have to earn it. And when we really want to punish ourselves, we put the incline up and we say, look at me, God, I'm working harder. I'm working harder. And many of us in life, and why Easter hasn't been what it could be, is because we're just trying to be religious enough so that to break even rather than get ahead. God wants us to get ahead. And there's nothing that you can do to, to, to burn, to, to do it, get this relationship with God on your own. We, we, but we try. We get on the treadmill. Look at me, God. Look at me. I'm going to do some good things. I'm going to pay it forward. I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm going to do some good things in, in the community. And we try to make that earn this relationship with God. And you can't earn it. You, you, you can't do that on your own. But that's what we try to do on the treadmill. It's called the treadmill of life. And that's what we do. And I'm here today to say, can't earn it. Can't do that. That just simply doesn't work. I'm not, listen, I don't just want to break even. Come on, I want to get ahead. So there's a couple key words here. Mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is not getting what we deserve. There it is again. How are you doing? Better than I deserve because of the mercy of God. His mercy doesn't give me what I deserve. That would be like me getting a caramel frap and a chocolate chip cookie dough blizzard Okay, and getting both of those, and God took away all the effects of those. That would be called mercy. Now, grace is getting what we don't deserve. That's what grace is. Now, now, now listen to me. See, most people, they like the mercy of God. They like Good Friday. They like the get out of hell free card. But listen, when it comes to grace, grace says, I don't have to get the frap. I don't have to eat the blizzard anymore. That is grace. That's power to move forward in your life. That's what this is all about. The power to live a free life. The power to step forward and learn the difference between those two. That's what we want to experience. The grace of God. The unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God. That's what I want for your life. A relationship with God the Father. See, people that get mercy with no grace, they just keep, I get a little bit of mercy, and they go back to doing whatever it was they were doing. And, and how many know that this is frustrating? It doesn't work. God wants to give us power so that we can live for him, and we can do that. God loved us so much, and he didn't love us because we're so lovely. You may have heard the saying, uh, a face only a mother could love. Have you heard that saying? How about we... We have a sin nature that only a merciful God could love. That, that's what we were. We're, it, he didn't love us because we're so good and lovely. We were unlovely, wrapped up in sin. And that's what, that's what, he, that's what he did for you and he did for me. I want to keep reading in Ephesians chapter 2 and go to verse 6. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So God can point to us. I believe God in heaven is looking for a people he can point to and say, they belong to me. I believe God in heaven, that's what he's looking for right now. And as, as future examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us. That's what he's looking for. That's right, what I see as a result of that but God moment, yes, Jesus covers our past, he covers my present, and he covers my future. That we can live for him. That's what he does for us. That's why we as a church, we're staying on mission. Oh, yes, we are. We're, we're staying on mission. And I want you to stay on mission with us right now. That's why th this week, um, 
I, 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 want you to, I want you to get to one of our five locations. Whether you're a part of the church or not, get to one of our five locations. Let our pastors pray for you. Oh, we're going to keep distance, but just let them pray for you. If, if, you're, in, if you're in a situation right now where you, you have and you're able to give uh, food to, to those in need, and, and, and you, you're listening to the statistics, we're giving amazing amounts of food out to families in need right now. You can be a part of that. Are we going to earn God's favor? No, we're doing it because we've already received God's favor. That's why. That's why we do this. Now, I, uh, I enjoy washing my car. As a matter of fact, washing my car is my happy place. And I know what you're thinking out there. You're thinking, well, pastor, I could help you with your happy place. I could bring my dirty cars to your house. Well, before you do that, don't do that yet. You know, when I, when I wash my cars, and I enjoy doing that, I don't wash my car so that I can have a bucket of dirty water. I wash my car so it's clean and so that I can go somewhere with it. And God our Father sent Jesus to wash us from our sin nature so that we can be clean and we can go somewhere with this. He wants to take us and keep us on mission. He wants, to, he wants us to be a church on mission because we exist at Bridge City Church so that as many people as possible will begin a relationship with God, and become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And that's what I want you to be a part of. Jesus didn't do all this to say, oh, I'm gonna keep the dirty water, I'm gonna keep this around just, in, just, just to show you what I've done for you. That's not the heart of my God. That's not his heart. His heart is to get rid of all the dirt, get rid of all the grime, so that we can be clean, so he can point to us and say, look, this is an example of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ that's still strong and still going strong. Listen, I want to live the rest of my life as a thank you. <laughs> that's right, a thank you. A thank you for what Jesus Christ has done. And I want you to live the rest of your life as a thank you. I want you to, to live the rest of your life as a, as a thank you and to be a part of this winning team because Jesus came onto the team. I believe that team is the church. And, the, and he's, he's calling the plays. And so are you listening for the plays? Are you listening to be a part here? That's what Jesus Christ is doing. Je Jesus didn't do all this to give us regret or shame or for the dirty water, or to keep us on a treadmill. He did it because he loves you, and he wants you and me to be filled with life. I want to tell you about my original but God moment where he changed everything. August 14th, 1980. It was the day that Jesus Christ became the forgiver of my past and the leader to my future. What's your day? What was the day or what was the month or what was the season? What was the year? Write it down in the chat right now. I want everybody to see when was your but God moment. Write it in there. Right? Maybe it was, a, it was fall of, uh, fall of two, 2002. Maybe it was, it was March two, 2010. I don't know what your day is, but write it in there. I want everybody to see your day so that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. God saved you, delivered you, put you into safety by his grace. Come on, he empowers you to even believe. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that no one can boast about it. Listen, I'm not here to boast about how great I am. I'm just here to say what Jesus Christ has done for me and what he did for a 15-year-old kid many, many decades ago, he can do for you today. How do you get this relationship with God? This is it. First of all, the bad news. You can't earn it on your own. There's nothing you can do to, receive, to, 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 to earn it, to, to be good enough for it. We gotta ask Jesus for his mercy. Jesus, 
your mercy, would you forgive me for missing the mark? Would you forgive me for trespassing? That means going into, pressing the boundaries of what you have for my life. Uh, there's some people here today that you've, you've, you're living outside those boundaries. You've missed the mark, but that's why we have mercy. But God. And then we ask Jesus to forgive us, and then we say, Jesus, I want you to be the leader of my future. I want you to call the play, and I just want to simply run your plays that we see in your word. And that's what we're going to learn. Even starting next week, we're going to, start, we're going to go into Ephesians chapter 1 and just learn what it means. That's what I want for you. We're going to learn together. That's what we're going to do. Jesus, forgive me of my past. Be the leader to my future. I believe there's many, many people listening to my voice right now that you have never had a but God moment in your life. You don't have a day, a moment, or a time when Jesus Christ has been the forgiver of your past and leader to your future. I want to offer you that today. And there's some of you out there that you did that a long time ago, but you've been outside the boundaries again. You've missed the mark again. Well, I want to welcome you home. And I want to offer you today to go back to that relationship, that relationship with Jesus Christ. Something you can only get by the mercy and grace of God. That's what I want to offer you today. Some of you, your palms might be sweaty, your heart's beating real fast right now. And we've been praying for you. People all over Pittsburgh have been praying for you today. Our pastors prayed for you this morning. If that's you, I want you to pray with me right now. And the prayer is very simple, and it's from the heart, and it goes just like this. Say, Father God, I've missed the mark. I've lived outside your boundaries. But I thank you, God, for forgiving me of all my sin. I want to change directions, God. I ask you, Jesus, to be the leader of my life. I ask you to take control and call the play. And I surrender this to you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, or maybe this is what we call re-upping, re-upping my commitment. I'm, gonna, I'm going back to crossing the bridge. This is crossing the bridge to life because of what Jesus Christ has done. Let us know. Let me know on the request of prayer so that we can pray for you. We can encourage you. We can help you take your next step because there's always a next step. And that's what we want for you. That's what I want for you. And that's what I am so, so very grateful for. Listen, I want to thank you so much for spending this time together with us. This has just been totally awesome. And I'm just so, so blown away by everybody's love, support, and care. Now, this is what we do. Now, it typically, if we were together in one room, you wouldn't just stand up and run out of the building right now. Just so don't, don't click off. Don't click off. Stay on. Stay on. Because a couple of our leaders from our Murraysville campus are going to close us up with a few comments. You don't want to miss it. So stay with us. Thanks so much and happy Easter. Hit the request prayer button below and a member of our response team will reach out to you. And we're just so excited that you made that decision to allow Jesus to be the forgiver of your past and the leader to your future. Here at Bridge City Church, we call that cross in the bridge, and we just want to say, welcome home. But we also want to let you know that this is not just a destination, but this is the beginning of a journey. And so this week, on Wednesday at 7 p.m., Pastor Nick from our White Oak campus, he is going to be having a special midweek worship experience, and we want you to tune in for that at 7 p.m. It's going to be a little bit shorter, 30 minutes, but there will be some worship, there will be some word, and it's going to be a great time. Yeah, and we're also so excited that we're going to be hosting prayer and food drives at all five of our locations. 
We're re trying to help those in need by collecting non-perishable items, things like canned goods, pasta, dry goods, uh, and also offering prayer at the same time, all without anyone leaving their car. It's a way for us to be socially connected while practicing safe physical distancing as well. So come give to those in need and also receive what we all really need, and that's prayer. And that's one thing I just want to encourage you, even if you don't have food items to donate, we still want to invite you to come to one of our five campus locations on Thursday, April 16th from 5 to 7 p.m. or on Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to noon, not just to donate food items, but to receive prayer. So whether you have food to donate or not, please come out, see your campus pastor, see your church family, receive prayer, and just take some time, not just to go to church, but this is our opportunity to really be the church. Amen. Well, from all of us at Bridge City Church, thank you. Thanks for joining in. We love you. Have a great and happy Easter. God bless you.